السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله حبيبه وصفيه أدى الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصح لهذه الأمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين فاللهم صل وسلم وبارك على هذا النبي الأمين وعلى آله وصحابته أجمعين وعلى من اهتدى بهديه وسار على دربه إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام معاشر المسلمين الكرام My dear respected brothers and sisters Al-Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim Al-Jawziyya rahmatullahi alayh wrote a wonderful book titled Madarij Al-Salikin Fi Manazil Iyaka Na'budu Wa Iyaka Nasta'een The stages of the seekers those people who are seeking in this life Allah seeking Allah's pleasure, Allah's forgiveness, Allah's blessings, those who are seeking Al-Jannah in the hereafter. So what are the stages and the steps that they should go through in this life to reach their goal? And one of the stages that he has mentioned is Manzilatul Shukr, the stage of thankfulness. And before a shukr he mentioned another uh, stage which is manzilatul rida satisfaction so when we are satisfied with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us then we become thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us to say radina billahi rabba wa bil islam deena wa bi muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nabiyyan wa rasoola so we are satisfied with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Thankfulness after satisfaction. And gratefulness is considered as half of our iman. Our entire iman is two halves. The first one is shukr, and the second one is sabr. Whenever we are given something, then we observe shukr. We give back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we thank him for giving us. When we are deprived, we observe sabr and we are satisfied with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us or taken away from us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always praised the thankful among his people. In Surah Al-Isra, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised Prophet Nuh alayhi salam. ذرية من حملنا مع نوح إنه كان عبدا شكورا. Indeed, he was a thankful servant to Allah سبحانه وتعالى. The same thing Allah سبحانه وتعالى praised his prophet Ibrahim عليه السلام. Why? لأنه كان شاكرا لأنعمه. Prophet Ibrahim عليه السلام was always thankful and grateful for the blessings Allah سبحانه وتعالى has given him. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given us examples how to be thankful to Allah, how to give back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when he started making qiyam al-layl, prayer at night, to the point that his feet cracked, Aisha radiallahu anha told him, Ya Rasulullah, you have been forgiven, why you are doing all this ibadah? He told her, Afala akunu abdan shakura? Shouldn't I be a thankful servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, this is the way Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam understood the shukr. 
This is the way he thought that, you know, he should give back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by standing long hours in praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not only that, but he taught his companions, he taught Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu to say after each salat, Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Oh Allah, help me to remember you, to thank you, and to worship you in the best manner. Allahumma a'inni ala shukrik, which means that we can never be thankful enough to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without the help of Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who makes us shakirin, who makes us dhakirin to him subhanahu azza wa jal. And a shukr is always part of the ibadah. So we have to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while worshipping him and submitting ourselves to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, بَلِ اللَّهَ فَعْبُدْ وَكُمْ مِنَ الشَّاكِرِينَ But worship Allah and be among the grateful people. Also in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala connected between two great, two great acts of worship, two great ibadah. الذكر والشكر فقال في القرآن فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون Therefore remember me I will remember you and be grateful to me and never be ungrateful to me الذكر والشكر عبادتان As we give the importance to الذكر remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time we are supposed also to give the same importance to the other one which is a shukr to be always thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dear brothers and sisters, while talking about this characteristic of the Muslim individual, this attribute of a shukr, we need to understand few things. Number one, that al-raziq huwa Allah, wal-mun'im huwa Allah. The source of every ni'mah, every blessing we get in our lives, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we should always remember this. Because once we forget that whatever we have came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then our behavior will be totally different. Will be totally different. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a wonderful example in the Quran, a wonderful lesson to all of us about someone, about a person, a man, with whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed with countless wealth. But unfortunately, he failed to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this person is Qarun. In Surah Al-Qasas, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about him. وَآتَيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْكُنُوزِ مَا إِنَّ مَفَاتِحَهُ لَتَنُوءُ بِالْعُصْبَةِ أُولِي الْقُوَّةِ Which means, and we have given Qarun, we have given him treasures, not kens, kunus, not one treasure, treasures. To the point that the boxes where he stored, uh, used to store his, his treasures could not be moved except by a big group of strong people, strong men. This is how wealthy he was. And before that, he kept asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know, owns the entire universe and the entire world, so he can give to anyone. But always, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives and blesses, he does so to test people. So Qarun was tested, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him. But when he sent to him people to remind him about his duty towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his duty towards the needy and the poor people, what did Qarun say? إِنَّمَا أُوْتِيْتُهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ عِنْدِي I worked very hard. I worked two or three jobs over time and no one worked with me. So it's mine. Nobody has given this to me. It's mine and I'm not going to share it with anyone. This is the logic of Qarun. He failed to recognize that this wealth is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he failed to share part of it with those who are in need. And he was such a selfish person. He failed to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know the result. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the earth to swallow him and his castles and his wealth and everything he used to have. This is when people are ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another thing that we need to remember, my dear brothers and sisters, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has overwhelmed us with all types of blessings. Reflect on your life. Look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with. Remember your health, your wealth, your family, the food you have on your table, the roof you have over your head, the pure and clean water that you have access to. Look at this beautiful place where you can come and pray five times a day and Salat al-Jumu'ah. Look at the security and the safety that you feel while you are at home or at work or driving or something like this. And look around you. Look at this world. How many people are missing the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you? Try to count this ni'am. Try to count every single ni'mah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. Can you do this? No, you can't. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran, وَإِن تَعُدُّ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا And if you try to count the ni'am that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, you will never be able to count them. Why? Because they are countless. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran, وَفِي أَنفُسِكُمْ أَفَلَا تُبْصِرُونَ don't go far away. Just look at yourself, your own body. The way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created your body and every single system in your body, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, the way to move, the way to look, to hear, to smell, to, to speak. Pounder on this ni'am to recognize what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. My dear brothers and sisters, our problem is that we take everything for granted. We take everything for granted and we forget to recognize the ni'mah. That's why we need reminders. We need people to remind us from time to another. The reminder benefits the believers. So whenever you are reminded, then you go back to yourself and you start pondering, reflecting on whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. At that point, you become a thankful person. You start giving back and thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how it's important to remind one another. Unfortunately, we somehow, we do give more importance to ibadat al-jawarih, to the physical acts of worship, more than the importance we give to ibadat al-qulub, the internal acts of worship. Ibadat al-jawarih are the physical ibadah. The prayer we do, the hajj, the umrah, the, the visible ibadah. You know, when people see you doing it. We are doing great in terms of performing this type of worship. But it's not enough. There is another category of ibadah that we are neglecting most of the time. Which is ibadat al-qulub, something internal. That no one can see you when you do it. And the shukr is part of ibadat al-qulub. Al-shukr is one of ibadat al-qulub. And guess what? We don't have time to do this. We don't have time to take like few minutes from our weekly schedule. I'm not talking about daily, but weekly schedule. Just few minutes to sit by ourselves. By yourself in a quiet area, in a quiet place. And just reflect. Observe this ibadah that we call at-tafakkur. Just to contemplate on yourself. Look at your life. Go back a little bit to your day, to your week, to your month. And see what good you have done. And praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. And see what bad and evil you have done. And make istighfar for that. Somehow we are such busy people in our lives. We don't have time to sit by ourselves and perform these acts of worship. Internal acts of worship that they are very extremely important. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in order to remember how to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he used to make dua. And he used to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying, Allahumma inni as'aluka lisanan dhakira wa qalban shakira. Oh Allah, I ask you to help me to remember you all the time. 
and to give me a thankful heart, al-qalb al-shakir. The thankful heart is the heart that remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. So we cannot be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without seeking his help and assistance. Out of the beauty of our Islam, of our deen, that we don't have to be only thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but also we have to be thankful to people. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, مَن لَا يَشْكُرِ النَّاسَ لَا يَشْكُرِ اللَّهِ Whoever is ungrateful to people is ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So being grateful to people is part of being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the other hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, مَن صَنَعَ إِلَيْكُمْ مَعْرُوفًا فَكَافِئُوهِ Whoever does any favor to you, give back to him or to her. Be thankful to him or to her. And he told us that, that the least we can do, we can say to the person who does a favor to us, is to tell him or her what? Jazakallahu khayran. May Allah bless you. May Allah reward you with the best reward. May Allah forgive you. This is the least if we cannot do an action and to give back to this person with something similar to the favor he has done to us or better at least to say this statement, to be thankful verbally to this person as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam educated us and taught us. My dear brothers and sisters, now we know that it's very important for us to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be thankful to people. But how to do that? Let's be practical and let's get, you know, at least something from this khutbah that we can practice all of us, inshallah. In order to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to do three things. Number one, to thank him by our heart and to thank him verbally and to thank him by action. Thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the heart is to believe and to remember all the time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-mun'im. He is the one who gave us this ni'mah. He is the one who granted us this blessing. And as he has given us this ni'mah, he can take it away anytime. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed us the way how to preserve the ni'mah. I don't think that there is any one of us here who is enjoying any of Allah's ni'am and blessing wish to lose this ni'mah. No one can do this. But how to preserve it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the ingredient. What to do? If you want to preserve the ni'mah and to have more, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us and he said, la in shakartum la azidannakum. If you show thankfulness to me, if you are thankful to me, I will increase you in whatever blessing I have given you. So it's up to you and it's up to me. If we want to preserve and to keep the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, we have to be thankful to him. By our heart. It's not enough. We have to be thankful to him verbally. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So proclaim verbally the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he bestowed upon you. خير الذكر لا إله إلا الله وخير الشكر الحمد لله. Let this الحمد لله this statement, you know, uh, in your speech all the time. Everything, whatever you do, whatever you have, when whatever you lose, always الحمد لله. And Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم taught us that whenever we see something that we like, we are happy to see it. We are joyful. To say, Alhamdulillah, الذي تتم بنعمته الصالحات. And whenever we see something that we don't like, to say what? Again, Alhamdulillah, على كل حال. So we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we thank Him whether we see something good or bad. Whether we are given or we are deprived. Alhamdulillah, at all time. So let our tongues be repeating this statement the statement, the statement of praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. The third way how to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by action. 
Verbal gratefulness is good, but it's not enough. So we have to talk the talk and to walk the walk. So we have to give back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to act in order to give back to him. And if we want to act upon this thankfulness, then there are two things that we can do. The first one, dear brothers and sisters, is to make sure that you use Allah's blessing, Allah's ni'mah, according to his will. Use it in the way that will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why I'm saying this? I'm saying this because most of the time, astaghfirullah, we do receive the blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we misuse it. We use it in al-haram. We use it in ways that displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the way, mentioned in, in Hadith Qudusi, when he talked about you know, the matter between him and his creatures among the jinn and the humans. He said, I'm the one who create. But some people choose to worship someone else. I provide them, but they choose to thank someone else than me. My goodness is descending on them, and their evil actions are ascending to me. I seek their love by blessing them and they seek my anger and wrath by disobeying me subhanallah this is what we are doing with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so number one is to make sure that whatever blessing we have from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to use it in the proper way number two is to make sure to share allah's blessings with others if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with the blessing of faith, of an iman, don't be selfish and keep it for yourself. Share it with those people around you who are in need of this blessing of iman. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with the blessing of wealth, don't be selfish like Qarun and keep it for yourself. Share part of it with those who are in need. There are people around you who are in need. And by the way, Keep in mind that whatever wealth or properties or assets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, in it there is a portion that doesn't belong to you. It's not yours. According to the verse, وَالَّذِينَ فِي أَمْوَالِهِمْ حَقٌّ لِلسَّائِلِ وَالْمَحْرُومِ Somehow, for a divine wisdom to test you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put a portion of wealth in your account that belongs to somebody else to see whether you are going to be thankful to Allah and share it with those who are in need or you are going to be ungrateful and keep it for yourself. So if you have any ni'mah, share it with others. You have the ni'mah of health, extend your hand and see if any other person is in need of your help, physical help. So you are always there to help these people. And by helping these people, actually you are giving back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and showing thankfulness to him. Azza wa Jal. Nas'alullaha tabaraka wa ta'ala an yaj'alana min ibadihi shakirin. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum fastaghfiruh. Innahu huwa al-ghafuru rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa al-aqibatu lil muttaqeen wa la uduana illa ala al-zalimeen. وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحابته أجمعين وعلى من اهتدى بهديه وسار على دربه إلى يوم الدين أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters الشكر عبادة عظيمة To be thankful to Allah سبحانه وتعالى and grateful to him is a great act of worship even though when we are thankful to Allah Azza wa Jal, we are not going to benefit him, we are not going to add anything to his kingdom. And if we are ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are not going to take away anything from him and we are not going to harm him. It's all about ourselves. If we are thankful to Allah, it's for our benefit. 
If we are ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we are the losers. Keep this in mind. My dear brothers and sisters, I'm here today on behalf of As-Salam Foundation. As-Salam Foundation is an organization in, down there in San Diego. And I'm, I'm, from, I'm the Imam of the Islamic Center of San Diego. And I'm helping my brothers in this foundation to sustain a Quranic school, a wonderful Quranic school that started in 2003. More than 100 students, chil children that they have uh, at this moment, boys and girls, and about 40 adults learning at this school, a Salam Foundation. Not only this, but they don't have a place, so they are renting a space in a shopping center, and now they are planning to purchase a church over there in order to have it as a masjid and in the same time as a Quranic school. And I'm here to help them and help you to contribute in this wonderful project. And keep in mind, my dear brothers and sisters, that whatever you contribute, whatever you donate fi sabilillahi azza wa jal for this cause will be considered as sadaqa jariyah. So every single child will learn any Quran or any beneficial thing. You will share the reward with each one of them. When they purchase the masjid, insha'Allah, for everyone who comes and prays in this masjid, you will share the reward with, with every single one of them. My dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with a lot. And this is an opportunity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us to give back to him. And keep in mind that whatever you give, you are not giving it to these brothers and sisters or to this foundation. You are giving it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is your qard, the loan that you are giving to Allah on the day of judgment. You will take back your loan. You will not take it as money over there. You will take it something else that will make you extremely happy. Keep this in mind, my dear brothers and sisters. And I urge you today, inshallah, after salah, before you leave, to stop by the table in this exit and another table in that exit and do your best. Just do your best. Whatever you can afford, inshallah, help your brothers and sisters have a place where our youngsters can come and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and memorize the Quran and learn about their deen and preserve their Islamic identity. Jazakumullahu khayran for all what you are doing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, bless this community and bless your brothers and sisters and family members wherever they are. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our brothers and sisters all over the world. نسأل الله تبارك وتعالى أن يجعلنا من الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا ولأزواجنا وذرياتنا وإخواننا وأخواتنا أجمعين اللهم انصر الإسلام وأعز المسلمين اللهم انصر الإسلام وأعز المسلمين واخذل من خذل الدين اللهم انصر إخواننا المسلمين في كل مكان في فلسطين وفي بلاد الشام وفي بورما وفي كل مكان يذكر فيه اسمك يا رب العالمين اللهم كن معهم ولا تكن عليهم اللهم كن معهم ولا تكن عليهم اللهم أمددهم بمدد من عندك يا رب العالمين اللهم احفظنا بحفظك يا أرحم الراحمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة